Did you know that many believe the energy and haunted objects are caused by former owners and magical rituals? Are you aware that spirits can manipulate items and thoughts that we are mutually attached to? Sit back, relax, to understand how this is possible. We're headed to Villisca, Iowa to investigate the Villisca Axe Murder House. We don't know much about this place, but we do know that eight people were brutally murdered in their sleep. The hard part to accept is that six of them were children. I'm super excited to go to this location because we're exploring the concept of haunted objects. And I'm gonna go in there like a parental figure and show them compassion. It's my night to spend with them. It's a sleepover at the Villisca Axe Murder House. My name is Johnny Hauser. I've been at the Velisca Axe Murder House for about 15 years. Done the website, the groundskeeping, the history, the overnights, everything here. June 9th, 1912, town of Velisca has a church service, which gets over about 10 p.m. The Moors come home with two girls named Ina and Lena Stillinger, who are friends with their daughter, Catherine. Next day, the neighbor, Mary Peckham, wakes up at four in the morning. By 8.30, she decides something's wrong. She gets a relative to use his key he goes in the downstairs room, finds Ina and Lena. The authorities find the Moors upstairs. So sadly, there were eight total, six kids, two adults, all killed with an ax. The mirrors were covered throughout the house. Food at the table, bloody water, cigarette butts, footprints. Uh, detectives questioned people for five years in the case. Nobody. Nobody was ever convicted, still unsolved. I believe this was the work of an early traveling serial killer. You have murders from Louisiana all the way up through the Midwest to the East Coast to the West Coast, all Sunday evenings, all done with weapons found on the property, all families as they're sleeping. Some had mirrors covered, some had food left at the table. You know, this had all of those. At the moment, I'm kind of on that train right now, uh, but my opinion changes monthly, you know. I, I don't think we'll ever know truly what happened. A lot of reports of paranormal activity involve the normal doors opening, closing, footsteps, EVPs, the voices. It's a lot more mental manipulation, uh, some Amityville type stuff happening here. I think it likes to prey on the, the new people, the scared people, and likes to manipulate them, separate them, and constantly evolving. When I came here 15 years ago, it's a totally different place than what it is now. I mean, it's just changing constantly. I think this location's haunted. One, of course, the murders, what happened here. But I often wonder if it wasn't haunted before then. Something wasn't here before the murders even took place. But a lot of it is probably us coming in, investigating waking things up, inviting things in. You know, every night people come in and give me a sign of your presence. You know, the, the cliched question. All right, then you're kind of opening up anything to give you a sign. Come do this. Well, who knows who you're talking to? Something that could be wandering around outside and like, okay, I'll go in this building and do this. You know, 30s and 40s, he had seances in here. Who knows what's in this place? 
Seems like 90% of the activity for me, the entire upstairs, like any time I would investigate this place, I'd usually just go sit up there the whole time. Ina and Lena's room is really good. These two rooms almost are like safe zones. Stuff happens, but not to the extent as upstairs in Ina and Lena's room, for sure. The attic seems to be where a lot of the darker stuff seems to stem from, possibly. This place will search out what's inside of you and you and you and bring that fear, that, that fear that you have deep down inside, whatever it is that you're hiding from people. I think this house will try and exploit that and bring it to the forefront and manipulate that whole angle. The most surreal moment I've had here. I brought in a girl who was a, a school teacher very wholesome, doesn't do any of this, and I wanted to go with the idea that that place feeds on fear. So I'm putting her in different positions in the house, trying different experiments. Put her upstairs in the kids' room closet, and she's just sitting up there, and for fun, I just pull up my phone and play Pantera and blast it in the house. She's like, oh, that's weird. I kind of laugh to myself. She goes, no, that's really weird. It's really weird in here now. So I get in the closet with her, um, start to do an EVP session, you hear footsteps down here. And this went on for about a couple minutes, as well past the idea of, that's a ghost, or did you hear that? It was like, somebody's downstairs. They started up the staircase, down the hallway, into the kids' room, and we're in the closet in the kids' room. Under the door is a gap about like this, and you can see some ambient daylight coming in or street light coming in. And I'm looking under it and the footsteps you can hear, boom, boom, like heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. And something walks in front of the door because it blocked out the light. At that point, I go, got my hand on the loaded nine millimeter, I'm coming out in three seconds. I count one, kick the door open, clear the hole upstairs, clear the downstairs, doors still locked from the inside watch a surveillance video afterwards. Just, there's nothing at all in the house. Poor girl bawling her eyes out. She's in the closet like doing this. <laughs> Tears are running down. I thought it was like, like, oh man, it's on, but I, I called it. It's like, she is scared to death. Like she needs out of here now. Afterwards, the next day she gets in a car wreck and she's like, it's whatever's in the house. Got me in the car wreck and all this bad stuff started happening to her. Pretty sure you got in a car wreck because we had two inches of ice that night, you know? I go, do not go down this rabbit hole of every single bad thing that happens to you, you blame on the house. Everybody does that and you're just attracting more bad things and more bad things and more bad things. Squash that immediately. We were in the closet in the house. If it wanted to do something to us, we were right there. Sitting ducks, pretty much, but it didn't, you know? And I think that's a lot of people become obsessed with locations and things happening to them afterwards. And I mean, you just got to stop that, otherwise it will ruin your life. And I think that's what this house wants, is just to mess with people that way. Nobody's been here for a week. When the last overnights left, they locked up and I haven't even stepped foot in this house, just so it would be a shock to the system. God's peaceful and quiet for a week straight. Boom, here you guys are. I have experienced haunted objects here, and I think it's because they are here. I've brought in objects, you know, I've, I've done the uh, buy a creepy doll at a thrift store, bring it down to the house, and then stuff starts happening with that doll. And I really think it's because it was placed in, in the home. I don't think the kids are here. I don't think the Moore family's here, which might be wishful thinking on my point. Um, I've always thought, what a better way to entice people than pretending to be a harmless little kid. I, I don't think what's here has anything to do with any of that. I think this house is haunting this house. I think that's, it's its own entity, you know, from what happened here to the seances to, you know, laying dormant forever, inviting people in to investigate. It's just like flipping on a light switch in this house. Every time I've done an investigation, it's totally different. 
and it seems like the more comes, the more it just builds and builds and builds and builds. Stuff that happens isn't something a 12 year old in 1912 would be doing. And as weird as it seems, I think it sees the cameras and stuff and they're like, ah, okay, cool, I'll perform. Like I say, if nothing happens, if it's a quiet night, send one person, just go sit upstairs alone for 20, 30 minutes. This house just seems really uncomfortable to me right now. Uh, when we walked in, seemed all right. Now it's just getting kind of antsy and like I, my body's getting the fight or flight, like get out of here. I, I'm starting to reach my max on, I need out of this place. <laughs> have fun with that tonight and I almost feel like it's trying to get me out just because it's like let me at them okay get out of here they're mine you know so hopefully <laughs> I don't know if that's a good good thing or a bad thing but I don't know I'm just kind of getting the antsy feeling of like I just need out right now the concept of haunted objects is something that has been a part of history for a very long time. It's often related to a spontaneous death or a series of unfortunate events. Johnny Hauser told us something different. He told us that the house itself is haunted and we may be as well. I thought about that. I continued the story in my head and I believe he's right. The things we do, the questions we ask, the acts that we follow through with cause summoning of something that we can't even fathom. So many key moments that if haunted buildings and haunted locations could absorb all of that, this is the place where it's going to happen. Haunted objects is a very subjective concept. I understand that. It's our job to go in there, put our bodies on the line, figure out what's truly in the Velisca murder house and take it from there. Before we visited the murder house, we went to the cemetery. We wanted their blessing. If they are fully aware of what's going on, we needed them to know that we meant no ill, that we wanted to go there, show respect, continue the story, and pick up where other people left off. So we just met with Johnny Hauser, and he shared a lot of stuff that I haven't heard of before, things I didn't know. From the anxiety that he felt, a place that's so familiar, I'm kind of already on edge about the place. Right, I am too. I felt a lot of anxiety during the interview. I mean, this, the second that he started talking about the six children that were murdered, you could see a change in his face, like they were his kids. He has spent so much time in there that he has almost become one with the house. Like what I found most fascinating was is that he said that the house itself is haunted whether it may be the murders or something that happened before it. Do you think there's any truth to that? I think so. I, I don't know how someone can senselessly kill six kids in the house. Yeah. And he mentioned that the, the husband, Josiah, Josiah Moore, he was the one that received the most impact, the most damage. Usually when someone does something like that, that's out of rage to kill someone and target one victim and hit them that many times so they're unrecognizable. Yeah, it was premeditated. I, I feel like this killer went into this house specifically after Josiah, and when he went in there, something overcame him, whether it was an energy in the house before he was there, or that man created that energy, manifested that energy on command, and it never left. He described anger in this house, sadness, anxiety that we started to feel before we left. I mean, this is, this is a place that has our number. You have to be scared to go in there tonight. He said it feeds off fear. You can't be fearless when you, uh, when you start to think about how many people over the course of time have been affected after the murder. All the validation, all the stories, how it's changed people's lives. You're not physically manipulated here. You're mentally manipulated. The only thing that I can think of is that whatever is in that house wanted blood to happen, wanted someone for a minute to feel what they felt. Because when you're hit with an ax, you might not die right away. You might sense that blood, and then you get hit again before you can register it. I just can't even imagine that. Like, 
what if you get hit and you're, you you wake up and you you know what's going on, but you can't react because the damage has already been done? You just feel helpless, and before you know it, you're gone. And um, I don't know. It's just a place that I'm I'm really nervous about. I've done a tour here before. There is something there. There's a heaviness factor. I feel it again today. We have to have each other's backs. We have to hear everyone out, not assume and, and take everything we say to heart because we need each other more than we ever have in this place. And I promise you that. He also said about the fear thing, I think we're all gonna have to individually be in the house alone and see if it does play off our fear. Yeah, as much as I don't want to, it's something that you need to face man to man, one on one. And I think you need to go see if you can relive the, the crime on the second floor. I'll go in the attic where they say the killer could have been hiding at, waiting for the family to come home. You sure? I think so. I'm, I went in there when he was showing us around and it just was really, had a really bad vibe in there. Just, um, I'll go in there alone tonight. We're on the road, the path that takes you to the Velisca Cemetery. This is where the Moors are buried and where the Stillinger girls are buried, probably along with their families. And although Johnny says that they're not at the Velisca house anymore, that's him being positive about it, we know for sure that they are here. And in respect to them as people, not victims. I want to go see them. I want to go let them know that we mean well, that we mean no disrespect, and that we say a proper goodbye as we um, force ourselves into their home. I want to introduce myself before we go into their home. Let's go. But from what I've studied, they're very close to one another, almost catty corner. If you see Stillinger or more, they're going to be right next to each other. Just keep an eye out. If you see it, just let me know and I'll stop here. You will. More. Is that them? More over here. Another more. Yeah, here we go. This might be it. Right yeah, right there, more in Stillinger. Here we That's go. That's where they're buried. Joseph and Sarah, side by side, along with their kids, all in a row. So this place right here, this, this exact moment, the story of the Velisca murders actually becomes literal. It becomes tangible. We should go say our goodbyes. Let's go. This is it. This is. Over here, you can see all of their names. You have Josiah, Sarah, Herman, Catherine, Arthur, Paul. So sorry you guys lost your lives. So young. Father, mother, and children died June 10th, 1912. What's most powerful about this moment, Connor, is that we're standing above them. These people are six feet beneath us. Death is a part of life, but nobody should die like this. Death is expected. This was not. This shook up this town. This has pissed off many people for over a hundred years. The killer was never caught and paid his dues for this. Just wanted you guys to know that we're thinking about you and that we respect you. We're gonna go into your home tonight. If it's even possible, just say hello. You don't have to do anything. I want you to rest. But I wanted to meet you. I wanted you to meet my friends before we go to your house. It's only common courtesy. People love you. You've impacted a lot of people. 
even more so after you're gone. One day we're gonna find out who did this. God be with you and rest in peace. Rest in peace. After Nash and I set up the static night vision camera facing the Stillinger's room, it was now time for Zach to come in. Little did we know, after reviewing evidence, we saw an anomaly fall in front of the doorway. Moments later, Zach is going to experience something very scary in front of this door. So pretty much right now, um, I'm inside the Velisca home, uh, outside of the Stillinger's bedroom, and the boys set up a teddy bear and a REM pod right inside the walkway, and there's another Melmeter in the kitchen. Uh, there's a camera set up here in the corner to kind of capture everything, and we're gonna see what happens. I'm just gonna introduce myself and, and take it step by step here. This is pretty much terrifying. My name is Zach. I'm sorry that these bad things happened to you. I'm sorry that your life was cut short. Ha! Ah! What the f- what was that? I just heard something right in front of me right here next to me, whisper in my ear. I don't know what it said, but I felt it come up on me. There was a moment when I was in the family room on the first floor, and I'm just standing there asking questions, and I, I feel different, and then all of a sudden I feel this, this female presence and this rustling dress come up next to me. It scared me. But after I thought about that moment, I, I just wondered if she was just saying thank you, if Sarah Moore was grateful that I visited her and her husband and her kids, if she said, okay, you're welcome in our house now, or was she not aware and she said, get out of my house. I'm just trying to talk to you. I have full body chills right now. This is absolutely terrifying. Something just came up next to me and it almost sounded like a brushing sound, like somebody was wearing like a long ruffled dress. See that little teddy bear on the floor? Can you touch it? I just, uh, I was standing here and I'm trying to be sincere and open the night talking about the place and something came up next to me and I, I felt a static charge the second that it happened and I'm not sure how to react. It scared me. Um, I, I can definitely feel that this place is alive tonight and um, I just need to remain calm. I just need to remain calm. This teddy bear here with the light, can you make it go off for me? Can you touch it?
This is a very risky place. It's a very dangerous place. I don't feel 100% comfortable turning the light off. Contamination outside. Lena, Ina, I hope that you're at peace. Sarah Moore, was that you that walked up next to me? Was that you in your dress checking on me to make sure I wasn't hurting the children? My name is Zach. I'm here to communicate with you. I just heard, I just heard a voice in the kids room right in front of me. What did you say? It's pretty amazing because when something like this happens, you, you feel the charge right away. You don't know how to react because you're, you're in the dark in such a, such a horrible place. This was once a home and as Connor said, it's a battlefield, like there was blood everywhere here. Do you know that you're dead? Do you know who hurt you? What is your name? Who's there? Who's there? My heart rate's 138 right now. I just heard an exhale as I was walking into the Stillinger room. So it's my turn to go into the Velisca X murder house. And Zach just came to the safe house and he came in panicking that something happened to him. Get your breath, breathe. My heart rate went up to 138. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Now I'm not feeling anything at this moment, but I'm about to when I walk in this house. All right, so right now, I'm gonna go in the Velisca Axe murder house, and I'm gonna go in the attic, because according to Johnny, he said that it feeds off fear, and Nash offered to go in there with me, but I think I need to go in this attic by myself. And after a few minutes, I'm gonna page him through the walkie talkie to come upstairs and investigate with me. So here we go. Can't believe how gung ho he was to go in there after I just like freaked out. He's, he's scared shitless. Coming upstairs. My name is Connor. I'm going up the stairs of the X murder house and I'm headed to the attic. The attic is a place where the killer is said to have stayed before he murdered the eight people in the home. I'm not here to cause any trouble. I just wish to communicate with anyone that could be here with me. It here and we're just going to we're just gonna wait just like the killer did he wait here waited here in the attic it'll be exciting to see how the second floor treats him and we can kind of compare why the floors affect us in different ways if he gets a response because he's in the attic right now where the killer supposedly hid out before he killed 
eight people. I mean, I'm just trying to relate to what I felt in there. And he has a whole floor beneath him and a floor where six people were killed. I don't have it in me to do that. So, you know, kudos to him. We're here to investigate the concept of haunted objects. But in all reality, this house is a haunted object itself. The walls, the floors, they're all original floors. And the blood from the murders that the man took from all those lives is still in the original wood. I heard an exhale. It came after me in the Stillinger room. Do you have any idea like what that could be? Is there anything that hit your brain, your mind right away that said, maybe this is what it is, we need to go after it? Not right now, I guess not without being in there. We'll bring that up later. Right now, I'm feeling kind of calm, but I could be anxious to leave this attic. I'll just say that it's not that bad in the attic but if I go out there in the doorway out there in the other rooms I just feel so terribly upset like it's just so sad it's really almost unbearable like you guys watching this right now you don't have that feeling that I feel in this building I'm literally alone inside this house knowing the information that I know of what happened it makes the feeling just so surreal and all I can see is my LCD screen right now and somewhere my flashlights around here somewhere but it's just the feeling of being in here it's just it's just overwhelmingly sad and you watching this at home you may not feel the same thing that I feel but if you I guess it just I'm, I'm shook I'm startled because anything that just happens out of midair is a form of quantum physics, like an explosion of energy in a condensed spot. Let's try the spirit box before we call the guys in. My time was about to be done up in this attic as much as what I can handle. I started having that feeling what Johnny felt during his interview where it's getting to the point where it's too much. Part of me just wants to like page him and scare the shit out of him. <laughs> turn, turn down a little bit. Was it the brother of Josiah? Ross, did you murder your, your brother? Was it Ross that murdered the family? So Zach and I he threw this idea around. We did some research and we found that Josiah's brother, Ross, actually had a key to the home. And in fact, he was the only one that had a key to get into the home. During our interview with Johnny Hauser, he told us that all the windows were blocked off. There was no broken glass. There was nothing that showed any signs of anyone breaking in. And the door was locked when they found the family in the home. Maybe Ross was the one that murdered the family. Maybe it was jealousy. Maybe he envied the family. Maybe it was just financial issues that he had with his brother. Who murdered the Stillingers and the Moors? What is your name? Can you say that again for me? I thought I heard strange. What strange? Well, it's a good thing that he's not paging us. So I'm hoping that he's connecting some storyline. Or he's dead. Or he's dead. And he would hate that joke. Because he's scared to die. For being such ghost hunters and curious cats, he and I sure fear dying.
was a time in my life where I had to say I'm, I'm more of a fear of not living. Is there anybody here? If I leave this room, is anybody going to talk to me? I'll leave the attic. Oh my god, what the hell was that? Alright, hold on, we're gonna... We're gonna walk you the guys back in here, because that was not a... a safe little thing. Oh my god! Guys! Guys! Hey! Come back in here. Come back in. When I was actually in that moment, that was absolutely terrifying. Guys! Guys! Come in, come in, up in the attic. I'll be right there, I'll be right there. So I decided to go reach for my walkie talkie and call Zach and Nash and have them come in upstairs and come get me, see what's going on. So as I paged Zach and Nash, the REM pod and the mail meter went off simultaneously at the same time. I'll be right there, I'll be right there. Hurry, the mail meters are going off. Hello? Hello? Who came in? Who's up here? We're almost there. We're almost there. We're coming in the house. <laughs> Who's coming in the attic? Who is that? I just saw that. Who are you? I'm looking out the hallway and I can only see what's on the LCD screen. And as I'm looking at the LCD screen, I see like an orb or an anomaly form and go down and then go towards the kids room. I immediately get up and I go after the orb to find out exactly what that was. Right? Dude, the mel meter and the rim pod went off at the same time. <laughs> the mel meter and the rim pod went off at the same time. Hey, the rep, the hey no hear me way. out, hear me out, hear me out. I just asked some question and I heard a uh, uh, through, no. the, through the spirit box. You think that's what I heard Through the spirit stairs? box and as soon as I did that, the freaking REM pods and stuff started going off when I went to say, you guys, come in here. The REM pod and the mel meter just went off at the same time. Just at the same time. See? What? Who is it? See, I told you. The mel meter and the REM pod went off at the same time. So we go up there and just as Connor was describing what was happening, we heard the REM pod go off again right in front of us. We didn't hit the walkie-talkie button. This happened on its own. Something was up there with us. Connor saw something. We have clear as day spirit box responses, and I needed the audience to know from the butcher's mouth that half of that is accurate. The first half was Connor paging. It caused the frequency to disperse and, and pretty much breathe life into the EMF field, right? So when that stopped, Connor saw something. We went upstairs, we walked in, he described the scenario, and it goes off. The, the house kind of gets a, a weird vibe. We decided to do a EVP session, and Zach likes to listen to it live so he can hear all the responses so we don't have to review it later. And we're sitting there, and we're not really getting anything. We just keep hearing trains go by, and they keep destroying our audio. So in between the trains going by, we're sitting there and we're listening. And the feeling is still there from when I was in the attic and when Zach was downstairs by himself. We're sitting there and as we're listening, we hear what sounds like a woman or a little girl scream. Can you please give us a sign that you're here? Can you do something, move something, say something? Dude, that was a scream. That was a little girl scream on the second floor. I got 
got chills. Dude. Yeah. You gotta scream. Yes. Are you upstairs screaming? Are you okay? Something just, yeah. I heard a footstep. I heard a footstep. And the vibe has changed. Who's screaming upstairs? Are you okay? Do you need help? Who tried to communicate with me when I was in here by myself? So we're sitting there and I'm sitting next to Zach and Nash is filming us. And I notice Zach starts to look uncomfortable. Like he's moving back and forth. He's, his demeanor's changing. Is heaven real? What? Dude. Bro, you all right? Hey, the REM pod. Bro, you all right? Happened? Zach. Something just hit me in the nose, dude. Zach jolts up and I freak out because I didn't know what was going on. And as that happens, the REM pod goes off too. Zach told us he just got punched. Something just hit me in the nose, dude. Dude, dude the REM pod. Zach, are you okay? Yeah, I mean, dude. Some, something like hit me in the nose. I swear to God. Bro, are you all right? Maybe five seconds after I asked, is heaven real? I was punched in the nose. How is that possible? Did I ask the wrong question? Is that proof that something demonic is in this home? I cannot answer that. But what I can tell you is that a spirit can create physical force. Bro, my nose get like- Get out here. Go, out, out. My nose feels like it's cut. Zach, come here. Zach, come here. What? Hang on. Tell me, tell me. Hang on, let me focus this camera. Hang on. Hey, tell me right now what just happened to you. I was just sitting there talking with you guys, trying to get some communication with the spirits. And the second that I felt like this punch to my nose, the REM pod went off for the second time tonight. And my nose on my inside right now feels like it's cut. Like I have multiple cuts in my left nostril. Are you bleeding? I don't know. I need to go get a, a, a towel or Kleenex and find out. Okay, go. But we just got to get out of here for go, a minute, go man. Go to the safe house. I'm following. How is that possible? Haunted objects. Are they real or folklore? Please consider the possibility that we as humans are haunted. Our thoughts, our emotions, our actions hover around us like an aura beyond our vision. We are the chosen. We could potentially be the greatest trigger object. We coexist with the other side. Around the world, the paranormal is a phenomenon that has captivated millions since the beginning of time. Into the 1900s, we fell in love with haunted objects. They were always connected to an untimely death or unfortunate event. In America, Ed and Lorraine Warren have been household names. It began with a doll that was believed to have been riddled with the spirit of a young girl. As it affected lives, blessings and confinement quarantined the energy, which is a solution to reverse the curse. Most people choose to cleanse the object or home, place salt at the entryways, burn or bury, and moisture the window sills with anointing oil. On the other hand, 
Some people embrace the unknown and collect these objects like myself. It gives me time to not fear, but acknowledge and learn in real time on a day-to-day -day basis. In my heart of hearts, we have just begun. Have you ever performed a ritual and noticed that activity increased? If so, the act of summoning means that you're dancing with the devil. It means that you willingly exposed your light to be shunned by darkness before you, unaware of what had entered. Did good or bad take place? Trust discernment at all times. You will soon find out. Energy of hell, heaven, or the in-between as we know it has a way with us. Our strengths and vulnerabilities are exposed and can be manipulated without our consent. Why quarantine when you can pray? Why stay when you can walk away? And why bless an item when you should bless yourself? The story of the murder house, our emotional hearts, and the bond between two friends. The idea of haunted objects will never be the same. Thank you.